and welcome to the post mayoral debate webcast here on WXYZ.com. You just witnessed the last debate between Detroit mayoral candidates Benny Napoleon and Mike Duggan, uh, both on Channel 7 and here on WXYZ. Uh, there were plenty of fireworks between the two men as they answered questions from our panelists and also audience members who are still standing by live at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History and from you online via Twitter. And tonight, our 7 Action News coverage of the debate continues here on WXYZ.com. We're taking comments from you on Facebook and Twitter, by the way, and we have that live audience you're looking at right here. And that is hosted by 7 uh, Action News anchor Glenda Lewis. But before we get to your comments, political analyst Steve Hood is standing by. Uh, Steve, nice to have you here as always. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, you have deep roots in, in politics here, uh, starting with your father, Nicholas Hood Sr. You've seen hundreds of campaigns in your time. Do you think either of the candidates has what it takes, first of all, to run the city of Detroit? And I will premise this by telling you told me you're an independent. You have not decided. I'm an independent. Um, I've worked for both candidates in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the campaign finance report, they both advertise with me. So and, and you no truly issue. have, you have not decided? No, absolutely. I, not. I will not decide probably until Tuesday morning. Okay, so uh, back to the question. Do either of these guys, do both of these guys have what it takes to run this city? They both do. They both do, but the thing I think they both negated in this debate was the elephant in the room, and that elephant is Kevin Orr. If we look at Kevin Orr's org chart, the mayor is off to the side. And I didn't hear, I heard Mr. Duggan say he's going to work constructively to try and remove him, to have a team around him. Well, Mr. Orr approves everybody he's going to hire, okay? Mr. Napoleon, on the other hand, said uh, the emergency manager law is you know, it is illegal. I believe it's illegal. So if he gets in there, okay, he will be put off to the side. Mm -hmm. Kevin Orr can decide not to do it. So that was the big elephant in the room tonight. In terms of, I mean, if we nixed Kevin Orr, in terms of knockout blows, there were no knockout blows tonight. Both of these guys can do it. Um, I thought it was telling when Mr. Napoleon went after Mr. Duggan's record at DMC, mm -hmm. and Mr. Duggan came back and said, you're going to regret that next year. I want to know what that meant. A lot of people on Twitter said it sounded like a threat. It, it sounded really interesting. I've never heard anything like that in a, in a mayoral debate. You suppose he can regret it just because these are words that will eventually, uh, in retrospect, in I, historical view, may look like he right. made a mistake. And Mr. Duggan, you know, each question that he got a chance to, he went back over his history at the DMC. He used that as an underpinning. Mm -hmm. It was also interesting at the close how Mr. Napoleon actually did something I would never do, which is attack the media, okay, even, you know, because he felt that he has been portrayed unfairly in the media. And if you look at it, 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 it seems like there is a bias, all right? Uh, it also seems that Mr. Napoleon didn't use the power of the incumbency to its full effect. Is that a dying gasp of a candidate who appears to be maybe in the neighborhood of 16 to 20 points down in the polls? Uh, if that poll was done by Epic MRA, I don't think it's a dying gasp because two out of the three last mayoral polls, Epic MRA got wrong. They got wrong Freeman Hendricks. They got wrong Kwame Kilpatrick versus Gil Hill. They got it wrong, so this may be a lot closer than you think it but, is. But it's still a fairly big gap to cover. So it's it's fairly a big gap, but you've got one week, you've got television time, and anything can happen in a week. So right? then, by attacking his opponent, then what do you think Napoleon is trying to accomplish? He's trying to close that gap, mm -hmm. but there were no knockout blows. Mm -hmm. He didn't knock him out. Mike Duggan was able to deflect. I mean, because you can look at Mike Duggan's record at the DMC from a jaundice eye, or you can look at it from the eye of what we see. When you see that new heart hospital, you see what Mike Duggan has done. When you see that new entrance to Sinai Grace, you see what Mike Duggan has done. However, it, it, Mr. Napoleon says all his facts are documented on this, and I'll have to look up all those facts. Now, I, I run the, uh, the tweet just a, a second ago saying Napoleon has a background in public safety, Duggan with a background in restructuring big business. Is that fair to characterize those two guys in that direction? Because Duggan, after all, was a prosecutor. He has law enforcement mm -hmm. background, and as Napoleon as a sheriff, certainly that's, that's a pretty big administration also. That's a large administration that he has, but he also has financial background. I mean, he left, when he left the Detroit Police Department, he went to work for one of the largest financial, I mean, real estate advisory firms. So Mr. Napoleon is no slouch. He's got the business background as well. And Mr. Duggan is no slouch when it comes to crime. His, his duty, when he was at prosecutor's office, he did a good job there. He did a good job there. But they certainly are, seem to be pegged in those particular roles. That's right. Well, people love to put people in boxes in <laughs> campaigns so they can understand. Oh, media love to do that. That's right. what they do. Yeah. you got to put them in a box. All right, so uh, let's, let's put the boxes over the, uh, the winner and loser in this particular debate. Would you, would you pick one as a winner and one as a loser? I would say that 
Mike Duggan held his own and held his lead, okay? Benny Napoleon didn't get blown out. He didn't get blown out in any of the three debates. So that keeps him in it. If I were going to give an edge, I don't know. It's, it's tit for tat because of the fact that exchange on the background history. All right, I think Mr. Duggan stated his history well, and I think Mr. Napoleon stated his history well, and, but their plans lacked the big elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. The big Which winner is Kevin Orr. Is Kevin Orr. Yeah. It, it, really, it really didn't. Um, Mr. Duggan talked about him being involved in a bankruptcy before, mm -hmm. not having to have training wheels. Well, he's not going to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, is, this train is rolling already. And so there you have that balance. It's, it's who, over the last week, it's who can convince those voters, their voters to come out. I think Mr. Duggan kept his people, kept him reassured. He kept his mantra going on. Mr. Napoleon attacked at that mantra. And he may have made some headway tonight because he did make some good points. I thought it was telling that when the little girl asked the question, they both finally smiled and warmed up. Well, how are you right. supposed to not smile when you yeah, got a 10-year-old both. Girl? I was like, okay, who's made, guys. Who's made like, guys, so much money selling candles? You, form, you finally warmed up, guys. You know, but that's, um, that's basically, I, 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 six and one half dozen the other. No knockout punches. Steve Hood, thank you very much. Thank you. Glenda Lewis is standing by right now at the Charles H. Museum of African American History, where the audience uh, just participated, also in the debate. And uh, first of all, we, we all love the little girl, the candle impresario. Uh, she was a great add to our show here tonight, so thank her for us. Do you have any other comments from the audience? We certainly do. And she really, Stephen, was an example of a Detroit business owner at 10 years old. Hard to believe that and hard to resist hearing what her point of view is. Um, but a lot of reaction tonight, a lot of comments um, from people and especially business owners in the crowd concerned about where they're going to fall in this. So, Mr. Bryce, you had a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to say that as a uh, resident of the city of Detroit and um, also as a business owner and a public servant, I very much appreciate the debate. Uh, I think the candidates did a great job of explaining where they was. The one thing that I do regret, though, is that I really didn't get in full detail what the candidate's plan was to fight public safety. And I'd like to know further, what are you going to do to make the residents of the city of Detroit feel more safer in their homes and in the community? So I would like to hear more on that. But it was great debate. And so with Benny Napoleon talking about his law enforcement background, did you hear what you needed to hear in there? Or you still feel like there's some public safety lacking? Because we were talking about Benny in between. I think Sheriff Napoleon has a great idea um, being the former chief of police of what the crime statistics is in the city of Detroit, but I think that both candidates need to do a better job explaining to the residents of the city of Detroit what their real plan is. Okay, okay, and we're going to go back, Stephen, if we do have a couple more seconds to ask the doctor here. Tell me your name, sir. Dr. John Trotter, uh, Vice President of the Detroit Black Chamber of Commerce, uh, Interim Chair for NMA. And um, the question is, we're trying to do safety, health, and um, access, and to get Detroit transforming back to normal, you're going to have to get the people that move from the suburbs back to Detroit mm -hmm. and nationally, internationally. So it's going to be huge for job creation and education for the children. And also, the last administration received federal and state dollars that were available for every sector that were not used. So how will they gain that stimulus money and use it to propel Detroit in the economy? So Stephen, still a lot more questions mm -hmm. for the candidates out here, um, as you can hear, and some very good ones, some heartfelt ones, a lot of passionate people in this crowd Sometimes as to the why they took their time out to come down and sit down and listen to the candidates. All right, Glenda, thank you very much. As a matter of fact, we got a tweet from Terry Turner uh, along that same line that uh, the gentleman was just asking. He said, uh, uh, what will you gentlemen do to make Detroit a 24-7 city? Uh, we can't just be an event city. So definitely it's that, getting the city open for business for everybody right there. Okay, thanks, Glenda. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Joining us now is Aaron Call, Director of Debate at University of Michigan. And you've participated, seen your share of debates, I'm, I'm sure, over the years. What do you think um, was your overall impression of these two candidates from a debate standpoint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from a, a debate perspective, I thought both of them did a, a very good job, and both of them in this particular debate I thought were above average. Um, there was certainly some contrasting styles and the uh, stressing of different uh, kind of reasons for what to vote for them. Experience in the kind of business world, real world, especially the Detroit Medical Center, and then on the other side talking about uh, police kind of on the street, on the ground, uh, background experience. So I thought both candidates played to their strengths in kind of really um, showing the things that make the most qualified to be mayor. Now on, on style, uh, I, I was watching the, the tweet stream and it was actually getting pretty busy here and nine out of 10 people, including a, a lot of Benny Napoleon supporters, begrudgingly admitted he looked nervous. He, d he looked like he was on the defensive. 
uh, and, and trying to be attacking, but then stepping back and defending. And he, he never really scored points, is what people were thinking. I think that he scored some points. I thought the highlight of the debate for him was the issues that dealt around children. And mm -hmm. when the question um, from the young girl was asked, you could just tell that demeanor totally changed at that moment. And so where he may have been nervous earlier, you could almost see kind of his face lit up, both when he was asked the question and then when he got to interject his experience with child issues uh, as related to several of his previous jobs. So I thought that was a high point, and he did score points, um, in, certainly in, in that respect. Um, but as you mentioned, and as the tweets mentioned, in other areas, the, his nervousness definitely did show. Uh, he had some kind of canned lines and talking points that he tried to deliver, some that were especially negative. And when he did them, sometimes rather than looking at directly at the camera, he would look down or even kind of look up and not directly into the camera when delivering them, which I think also showed some of that nervousness. There was also a few other lines in the debate, which I think all, w would also uh, demonstrate that that nervousness existed. Um, when talking about so the, some of the previous uh, Detroit mayors, and he, I believe he said something like, uh, I do not plan to be in jail in the future. And I thought that was kind of a gap, the way in which it was delivered. Well, obviously that's the case. It kind of come, the way it came out, I think, uh, kind of showed that he may have been a little bit nervous, and it showed in that particular instance. The, the point of any debate, obviously, is to sway people to your argument. I mean, that's why I'm sure you teach students, mm -hmm. is you're going to make a debate because you want people to come to your side. Um, in these three debates, and specifically the one tonight, did Benny Napoleon get more people, I, I mentioned him since he is trailing in our polls, that if you believe our polls, it's, it's a fairly wide gap. Did he pull some people along with him tonight? Did he do what he needed to do to sway those undecideds? Mm -hmm. I think he did some because I think the the most uh, the, his best kind of uh, aspect tonight was that he was more, I think the more likable of the two debaters and that came across both in the area of uh, the the, the, child, the question from the child and him talking and he being very more personable I thought than Mr. Duggan and so that may have helped some uh, undecided voters and also there was a point where Mr. Duggan kind of made a veiled threat uh, about you know you're going to regret some of the things you say um, and and that I think could have turned off some undecided voters as well. Um, so in those instances, I do think that he helped himself. But at the same time, if, as you mentioned, the polls are correct and they're to be believed, there's a lot of uh, air, a big gap to make up. And I'm not sure that he did uh, convince enough undecided voters to do that, especially the way in which he concluded the debate, kind of going negative both versus uh, the media and also kind of you know very negative uh, against his opponent. And that's usually not something that someone who believes that they're ahead or they're doing very well would do. It could be viewed as uh, desperation uh, if by some people because of just how negative it was and at the very end of the debate. So Aaron, if you were scoring this debate and you had your scorecard there, and this is like dancing with the stars, at the end you hold up a number, uh, how would you rate these two? Uh, I think that I would say that uh, Mr. Duggan won the debate uh, just uh, by a little bit, and I think that he had some you know, very good points in the debate showing his experience. He continually went back to the Detroit Medical Center, and that was almost kind of a running mate or even his middle name in this debate, and that he mentioned it so much. And I think that kind of practical background experience is something that voters may, may look for. So I would give him the edge slightly on points, um, but I also think that Mr. Napoleon did a, a very good job and came across as, as very likable, personable, and also had a uh, background uh, that it would be beneficial just kind of in a, in a different way. And so it's up to voters then to decide which is most important when looking and making this important choice. Aaron Call, uh, thank you very much for coming in and, and, and talking with us about that uh, this evening. Uh, just a couple of the tweets I'm reading here. Um, I'll just read them kind of randomly. I'm not picking anything. Uh, while Mike Duggan was sleeping in Livonia, Benny Napoleon was obviously watching him. Um, uh, I mean, I'm just going to be careful that I don't hit, hit one that we don't want to say. Um, So still not thrilled about either candidate. May exercise my right not to vote, at least, for mayor. Uh, I actually saw that a couple times, that people were a little bit underwhelmed, perhaps, by uh, their choices in this particular election. But again, uh, it's been tough times in Detroit right now. And, and I think, as uh, we heard from Mr. Hood just a minute ago, the elephant in the room is that there is an emergency manager who is technically running this city, will probably for the next year, if not a little longer. And so uh, right now, the, the role of mayor may seem just a little bit of an afterthought. But uh, obviously, after we get past that point of when the emergency manager does leave, and we assume we're going to hit that point at some point, uh, the mayor is then going to be uh, in charge of making whatever plan the courts have uh, made happen. We're going to go back to Glenda Lewis right now at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Glenda? All right, Stephen, thanks so much. A lot of good comments um, and a lot of good thoughts still from Detroiters who are lingering in the crowd, wanting to share their thoughts. This is what they wanted to hear from the candidates. And you say you didn't hear anything about the future city document. Well, uh, 
First of all, Rufus Bartell, uh, president of the Independent Business Association. Thank you. And uh, uh, completing, well, finishing member of the Mayor Advisory Task Force that helped to produce the Detroit Future document, which Thank in my you. estimation is probably a, one of the most comprehensive and important documents probably in Detroit past 50 years. Okay. And I didn't hear either candidate speak to that. And how we redevelop the city is all there. It's a blueprint. And I think that if both candidates were to um, go into that document, and I'm pretty sure they may have read the document, I'm not, I'm not sure if they studied the document, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it creates a roadmap. And I'm a firm believer is uh, why recreate something that's already been done for you. Oh. And I would like to see uh, the mayor candidate speak to that document. Uh, I was there for two years. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be a year assignment, but it's a two, it turns out to be a two-year assignment. Mm -hmm. And it's very thorough, and you can go to the uh, home base in Eastern Market and pick it up. Mm. And, I, and I employ the Detroiters to go and do that. So Thank if you. they're talking outside of that document, I'm just not sure mm. how much input they had and thought in putting together a development plan. All right, Rufus, thank you so much. Thank you. And also a concern for senior safety. You Please tell me your name. You believe it. I'm <laughs> Bernice Smith, known as Mother yes, Bernice. We call her Mother Bernice. Yes, I, I'm concerned mainly because of the fact that I'm a senior. And I have been fighting and fighting for the longest. I'm on uh, the air with Angelo Henderson, and we discuss seniors and the welfare for them. And he does 30 minutes of crime mm -hmm. before he starts his program. And the crime has just gotten out of hand here in the city of Detroit. They're either robbing the seniors, they're robbing the people that goes to gas stations, yes. and you cannot even come out of your house because you're afraid that somebody's going to be out there waiting for you by your car. You can't go to sleep at night because of the fact that somebody might break into your house. So I didn't hear enough of what they need to do in regards to the seniors and how we can uh, protect them. Be, being a senior myself, 80 years old, I feel as though we need help. Mm -hmm. We cannot go to the store. We cannot go mm -hmm. to the ATM. Uh, M. So, wh so what, what's going to happen? Bernice, what not from do? either candidate did you feel like you heard enough about senior safety in particular and then resident safety? My thoughts about, they know it, mm -hmm. but I want them to bring it out so we seniors can understand and know that they care about us also. We belong in this city. I've been in this area uh, for 18 years. I love it here. I'm protected here by Wayne State and Napoleon. This is across the street from my, my home. But the fact is, what's going on with the other seniors that live outside of Midtown? Mm -hmm. Why can't we give them protection and support? Mm -hmm. I've met with the chief of police. Okay. I know him. And uh, I've spoken to him in regards to that. I go to the police commission meeting every Thursday. Matter of fact, I'm going to run. And do you feel like with <laughs> the new police chief, James Craig, and with one of these candidates, can, can we get the city back to where it needs to be? Or you're not seeing the gel. If or will step aside and give us some money That's right. for the police. The police, they, they risk their lives every day when they go out there in the street okay. for us, yes. not for them downtown, for us, the little people. So what are we going to do for them? And I have stressed this over and over again. Give them money so we can get more police to be out in the street. We need police well, patrolling the area. Ms. Bernice, when you talk about crime, we just saw what was happening with the DDOT bus situation. Right. And the bus drivers having to stand up for their own safety. And we have a young man now who's now a guardian angel on the DDOT, with the DDOT buses. Yes. Yes. Tell right. me about that. My name is Kevin Jones. Yes. I'm with uh, the guardian angels. We serve to protect our citizens, and we want to take care, more care of them, make sure they're safe. Um, we fight crime, and we want to deter the crime. So what is it that you do on a bus, and do you feel like someone would have your back? What do I do on the bus? I patrol the bus. I make sure everyone on the bus is safe. The drivers are safe, and we want to deter crime. So we will, if we have to, we will put people off the bus and okay. take a stand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Stephen, we're going to send it back to you. All right, Glenda, thank you very much for uh, reporting live tonight from the uh, Charles H. Wright Museum in Detroit with a lot of people watching the show. We've got a couple people with us uh, who were in the studio tonight for the debate, including Mary Kramer with Crane's Detroit Business and Bill Ross with the Booker T. Washington Business Association. Thank you both for coming in this evening. Sure. Uh, first of all, Mary, you had a chance to ask a couple of questions, refresh our memory of which questions you asked, and then let us know, did you get your answer? Well, I asked about whether or not the, there was a proper role for mayors to get involved in promoting minority-owned or women-owned businesses, and uh, that was one question. And the other question was really about kids and what agenda they had, uh, each of them had for Detroit um, children. 
And I, I'd say pretty much. I think that both answered the question. I think the young woman, the the girl who sold the candles. thousands of candles. I mean, that was an amazing. I think every college in Southeast Michigan is probably dialing, looking her up on Facebook to to give, offer her a scholarship. But I, I think it was the as far as my questions um, go. I think that that they were answered. Um, I do think that there, were, if I might, mm -hmm. there there was something really interesting in the debate. The ending statement by um, Sheriff Napoleon I thought was interesting because he, he interesting did Interesting in a good way or a bad well, way? Well, I thought it was interesting because it was kind of a, uh, it, it, he did the whole thing about Livonia, you know, mm -hmm. sleeping in Livonia. And that on, at least on Twitter, is going crazy. Uh, and It, it backfired of, to a degree. It backfired yeah. a little bit, but you don't, the, those are people on Twitter, so you don't know how right. it resonated with, with people watching at home. But the other, I, the thing about the media, he when he came into Cranes and we talked to him, he would, he had a bit of a edge because in most elections, he said, and I and he's right, business has supported both candidates. There has been a nominal uh, contribution to one candidate and a larger contribution to another. Mm -hmm. That's happened for as long as I've lived in Detroit. Didn't happen this year. So, Benny so didn't he had get the kind money. of an edge. Yeah, he he didn't get the money and. Uh, you know, so he, he had a bit of an edge with the business community and also, I think, with the media. Bill Ross, um, uh, why might that be? And, and we talked about this a little earlier here, is that, uh, the, that Benny Napoleon maybe has the uh, image as the law enforcement guy and, and Mike Duggan's got the business guy. Is that why businesses are tending to support him more? I think so, because he talks about his background as a turnaround person uh, with the DMC, and he talked about other projects where businesses are engaged, whether they are either vendors or they are suppliers, or they have some level of involvement. Mm -hmm. So he kind of moves forward from the perspective of representing business and the interests of business in a good sense that is for the development and the betterment of the city of Detroit. It's not from the bad. On the other hand, Sheriff Napoleon uh, is strong on law enforcement. I think he touched a nerve with many people when he talked about firsthand uh, the widow of the police officer who now lives on a pension Diane in the, in the mm -hmm. impact. And he had a certain degree of emotionalism about him when he spoke, having been out there on the front line. So there's a big contrast there, and business usually uh, gears itself toward those who they think can move forward a business agenda. So as a business association then, would you have preferred Benny Napoleon spend more time talking about what he might do that would enhance business? Well, from a business uh, perspective, uh, I like the question that Mary asked about the involvement of small women-owned and minority-owned businesses and their ability uh, to access the opportunities that will be availing themselves and have availed themselves in the city of Detroit. Because in many instances, you don't have the large businesses, but you have many small businesses. As we know, employment comes from the two and three and four shop operation versus the large corporations. So it's important to engage as many small businesses and women-owned businesses and particularly minority-owned businesses as possible in the process. Mary, you, you, you seem to be over here nodding. Well, I... I, I uh, by the way, I think you're writing your story for tomorrow. I, you? Actually, I love these things. I know, aren't they great? great? I, know, yeah, I, I, I was looking at Twitter and I, got the and I took a few notes I, during the debate. And the other thing, aside from the business stuff that we talked about, the other thing that I thought was striking in this debate is I did think that there was a contrast in how both of those candidates looked at strategy and exercising power. And it came up a couple of times in a couple of different ways. When um, Duggan said he was going to get the streetlights on, Napoleon said, you can't. Duggan knew that he could appoint people to that lighting authority. That, that he will exercise that power. He's, he's strategic in how he thinks, where are the levers I need to be able to move to get things done? The other thing was, in, back to the business question that I asked, I asked uh, the sheriff, well, what kind of procurement program do you have mm -hmm. for companies as sheriff? And he said, oh, that's a process with Wayne County. If that were Mike Duggan, I think the answer would have been, I promoted companies and told them about the procurement process, and I made sure that women owned. You know, it's just the way right, that you, you, you the strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, real, real quick answer, because we're almost out of time with you folks, but uh, a winner or a loser? I think it was pretty close. Okay, winner or loser? I think it was Duggan. Okay, we thank you both.
Thank you. Mike Kramer, Bill Ross, thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, tonight, by the way, our exclusive WXYZ Detroit the Free Press poll is shedding a little new light on this election and the city. We ask you if the general election were held today instead of perhaps this debate tonight, who would you vote for? And more than half of you, 51%, say you would vote for Mike Duggan. So here are the numbers right here. As you can see this right now, Benny Napoleon with 26% would be uh, the vote for him. 23%, which is a pretty big number, left undecided in this particular race right here. So this perhaps is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the tableau that set the table for tonight's debate. Okay, we've got a couple of other guests with me, and I'm gonna have to introduce myself to you on air. Stephen Clark. Steve Hicks, President of Teamster Local. Steve, Street how you doing? Sabrina Cezier. Psychotherapist. Hi, Hi, Sabrina. Okay, so uh, you guys got to watch the debate in the studio, I assume? Yes. Okay, I'll start with you, Sabrina. Then what, uh, what, what were your impressions? Um, I found that the debate was very intriguing. It was convincing, and I liked the fact that there were clear and concise points of what the candidates wanted to do as far as moving Detroit forward. Um, first of all, Dan, let me ask you, are you uh, decided already in who you'd like to vote for? Yes. And I would have, you like to tell us? Sure. Oh. I have decided for Mike Duggan. Okay. And uh, what's the reasoning? The reasoning is, you know, I don't care if you're purple, orange, turquoise. I am concerned with who is qualified to complete the job of being, becoming the mayor. And I like, again, like I said, I like the fact that he has clear, concise points. He has a good reputation, a good background. And every question he had an answer with facts of how he can move this city forward. Steve, supported somebody before we came in here? Benny Napoleon, 100%. There you go. So now what'd you think after tonight? I think Benny won the debate 100%. He showed that he was very human. We need someone that cares about working people in the city of Detroit, and Benny's the man. Um, Duggan is cold-hearted. Benny showed that he was a human being. He really cares about the citizens of Detroit. Now, are you concerned? Because I, I'm just watching, uh, you know, the, the tweet stream. A lot of people saying that Napoleon looked nervous, unsure of himself, defensive at times, uh, too aggressive at other times. Uh, Mike Duggan looked like he was just playing it right down the middle, like perhaps uh, maybe a little machine-like. I think he was very cold. I think anyone that's human, as Benny was, showed his feelings. He loves Detroit. He expressed that, and I think it does show through with emotion. Is there something you would have liked to have heard from Napoleon, or did he give you, I mean, 100% exactly what you wanted? Or is there something you would have liked to, if you support a candidate, there's a chance there's something about him that you really like, and did you sit there and go, no, no, show him more of that, Benny, show him more of that? I, th I think he did a 100% excellent job, in my view. Okay, same question for, uh, for Mike Duggan then. So is there something about him that you wish that he would spend more time pushing that has really touched the court with you? Um, I like that he's humble and he has compassion and that he's people oriented. As a traveling psychotherapist, I go out into the community, into homes late at night, and the lighting issue is a very, very serious and concerning issue for myself. So I like the fact that he did address it and was able to identify some alternative ways of addressing the issue rather than just putting it on the back burner or just not coming up with an answer. I'm going to ask you a tough question. This is the question that, that, that these days seems like it's, it's just, it's almost sad when you get an answer to this question. If Benny Napoleon were not to win, would you be happy with Mike Duggan? No. If Mike Duggan were to lose and Benny Napoleon did, would you be happy with Benny Napoleon? No. So, uh, this is an all or nothing proposition in this. I believe so. My experience with Mike Duggan is that um, he thinks he's better than people, he's above people, he wants to deal with the corp corporate people and not with the citizens of Detroit. Okay, Sabrina, last word. I believe that um, both of them coming together could probably do a wonderful job. <laughs> <Wouldn't> it? <laughs> but we obviously have to decide on one candidate, and I am content that Mike has this in his pocket. Okay, well, we thank you both for coming in. I know it's not an easy thing sometimes to come up here just yep. out of the cold, be pulled up and, <laughs> and thrown on camera like that. Yes. We appreciate you both did a great job. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we want to thank all of our guests for joining us tonight for the uh, post Detroit mayoral debate webcast. Remember, election day is Tuesday, November 5th. That is exactly one week from today. So do not forget to vote in this important election. If you're in Detroit and you're registered, you need to vote. The polls are going to be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. We invite you to enjoy your evening and join us again tonight for 7 Action News at 11, and applause for you guys. <laughs>